Jesus is talking to some of his people. He's got his uh, cronies with him. He's got new people with him. He's got people trying to figure out not only what Christianity is, they're trying to figure out who Jesus is. And like us, many of us are hoping that what he is bringing is a sense of peace, a sense of tranquility. But what he says is if you think that I've come together to come here to bring peace to this world, you might be a little bit mistaken. What I've come to bring often is division. And he said, families will be against families. Fathers will be against sons. Daughters will be against the brothers. People will be against each other. And I wondered about that. When we come together as a church, oftentimes the thing that we are trying to come together at is peace, right? So why do we have this passage where Jesus is talking about that he's going to divide families? That's a hard thing to comprehend. But then I look at my own situation. I have people in my life, believe it or not, that I don't get along with. I know that sounds odd, but it's true. I have people in my family that have difference of opinions than I do. In my own family, if we got together talking about uh, uh, politics, uh, God, I hope we never talk about politics in my family, but, uh, or anywhere. I'm not a very political guy, but I think that what we would see is that there are differences. Like any family, right? Uh, if I had all of my friends grouped together and we talked about certain things, we, we would find differences, wouldn't we? What's your, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? Spaghetti? Pizza? Still in with the Italian thing there. What, what else? Tacos? Huh? Sushi? Nachos, another one, ice cream, hopefully not with the pizza. Actually, that might not be too bad. You got another one. See, this is a guy, he's, he is going to grow up to be a politician. He gets along <laughs> with everybody. What'd you, cookies. All right, does anybody here not like one of the things that was mentioned? What'd you, sushi. Huh? Same thing? Don't like sushi? Nachos? Huh? Sushi? So, the one that said sushi. <laughs> Over there by herself. Is it our job because she likes sushi to disown her? Is it our job to make her an enemy? because she doesn't, she's wrong about her food choices? <laughs> how, many, how many people, uh, for, their, for their favorite type of music of all times, uh, uh, pick jazz? Yep, all right. <laughs> so, are you, do you hate me because I like jazz? You think differently of me, I'm sure, just a little bit, but. And it's hard to be here and like jazz and be the only one that's right. <laughs> we have differences in this world, every single one of us from the trivial to the more serious. As, as pastors, we're not supposed to, to often, uh, we're not encouraged to talk about some of those deeper differences um, because we want to keep the peace. The more that we get to know each other, the more that we understand each other, the more we will run into differences. It can be as, as trivial as where do you want to eat today? Or it can be who are you gonna, who are you gonna vote for? Or, or what do you believe about uh, some of the hottest topics in the news today? And those are the things that oftentimes we, 
we create a little bit more friction about. It's easy for me to say, uh, I, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat a lot of, of sushi. And, and you and I can still get along. But in some cases, if we find ourselves on a different political spectrum today, uh, we're encouraged uh, to separate ourselves completely from someone that believes differently than we do. And when we're encouraged to separate ourselves, we're encouraged to join a side that uh, spends a lot of energy hating the other side that doesn't agree with them. Is that what Jesus was talking about when he spoke about division? Because I do believe, I, I do believe that what Christ is saying in this is the heart of this is that we should follow what's in our heart. We do have beliefs. We have beliefs that we have uh, prayed about, some of us have uh, uh, wrestled with, and at the end of the day, we do have beliefs. And I think that what Christ is saying is hold true to that. Because he's in a time in the first century where a lot of people don't really want this Jesus guy uh, he's speaking things about uh, unity and, and, and peace and acceptance. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. And so he's saying by holding true to what you believe, it's going to cause some friction. I had a, 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 there's a, there's a friend of mine that when I first became a pastor, uh, he was a huge mentor of mine. He was, when I was not a pastor and first, I, I wasn't raised in a church. I wasn't, I didn't go to church. Uh, I didn't, I, I, churches actually scared me to death. I thought church people were weirdos. Uh, and uh, today, I mean, there's some proof of that. But I've, I have found that I was mis, uh, distrusting of, of church people. They seemed happy for odd reasons. Uh, and I thought it was just strange, and so I didn't start even going into a church until I was about 30. Um, and when I did, I, there was a pastor there that really, I, I could trust him. He, seemed, he had this kind of folksy sincerity about him, and, and I really enjoyed listening to his messages. As I grew in my faith at that church, I started to wrestle with whether or not to become a, a, a pastor or not. Uh, and, and I wrestled with it uh, just as much as I did about going to church for the first time. Uh, people will talk about when, when you feel this calling, and I can really relate to that. I felt this calling, but I really, uh, whenever the call came in, I acted like I wasn't home because I didn't want anything to do with leading the church. Um, but this person helped kind of ease me into the pool a little bit. Uh, sometimes he would have me actually, when he was gone, preach for him. Uh, scary. Oh, that was weird. And some of those were awful. But, uh, and you might say the same about this one, but it's, uh, it was encouraging. And he became more than a, a, a role model, he became a friend. Bless you. And as we grew in our friendship, I was continually growing in my, in my call to be a pastor. And even when you become a pastor, uh, you are assigned a uh, kind of, you're supposed to take on like a mentor to kind of get you through the uh, logistics. Uh, church, just like anybody, uh, anything else, is, is a bit of an institution and there are things and hoops you got to jump through, which I'm always a fan of. Uh, and he helped me through those things. And he encouraged me when I took my first church. And as I grew in my faith, I would call him and, uh, about questions about uh, various things, you know, funerals, weddings, and uh, things like that. He would uh, listen to my sermons, and he was always there to encourage me. But as I grew in my faith, uh, even as a pastor, continually grew in my faith, some of... I found out that some of my viewpoints and my opinions differed from, from those of my friend. 
the way that we would approach certain things uh, were, were a little bit different. Uh, I preached a little bit different than he did. Um, he, he writes his sermons out. I don't write my sermons out. So there was uh, technique things that were different. But I also started to notice that there were uh, different value systems that started to show a distinct difference. Um, one of the things that I very, I, I very much value in, in this church is transparency. Uh, you may not always agree with what I say, but I will always approach uh, this position with honesty and transparency so you will always know uh, where, I, where I stand on certain issues. Um, one of the issues that is co constantly in debate is uh, lifestyle choices and whether the church uh, accepts lifestyle choices and uh, things like that. As I, as I grew into my faith as a pastor, I, I could not help but see God's message and the message that I was being called to deliver is one of love and one of acceptance. And what that led me to was the understanding that people are to be appreciated and respected and loved for however they are. Uh, and the more that I grew into that, the more I grew into the fact that people of different uh, income, races, lifestyles, cultures could be celebrated as they are. Because I believe that that's what God was telling me that uh, that's where my path was to go. I have friends in this same denomination that we are in that do not agree with that, that, that see that as, as something completely different. We're still reading the same scripture. We're, we're still uh, pastors, and we don't see eye to eye on this. And I found myself at odds with my friend of many years. The person that, that helped get me into uh, ministry we, we found that our, our value system, just on that and a couple of other things, were opposite. And people were telling me that that was now my enemy. That that's where the division came in. That divided against brother against brother. That I was not supposed to like this person that actually helped me grow in my faith. And I struggled with that. I happened to like this bonehead that didn't see right the same thing that I did. We had other things in common. We loved Seinfeld, for instance. This is when Seinfeld was something, I guess, but... We, that's one thing that uh, formed our, our friendship is we loved Seinfeld. He used to tell me that my neurosis reminded him so much of George Costanza. Now he says it's my physique, which makes me just wrong. I mean, that's just, you don't tell anybody that at all. But um, And so the division, we've got him on one side and me on another side. And I, and I had trouble even sharing that change. I remember when I first uh, felt that, that we had this, this dividing line, this difference. I was scared to even talk to him about it because I didn't want to ruin anything. I, didn't, I, I don't like conflict. I like peace. We're supposed to be peace-loving. We're supposed to be uh, uh, friendly. You know, as, as Christians, we're supposed to be walking and singing a hymn everywhere we go. Peaceful birds are supposed to fly out of our ears. I said ears, right? Okay, it's really close there. Really close. I was oh, almost doing stand-up again, and that's, I'm sorry, but. And so if I had this conversation, would that kill the friendship? And I remember we were having a conversation once about differences. Uh, John Wesley is a, is a man that uh, years ago started what's now called the Methodist Movement. Uh, the Methodist Church, which in some cases now is, is in this part of the world, is called the United Methodist Church. And he had a friend that he staunchly disagreed with, another pastor friend of his. 
uh, and it was over just a theological difference. They were friends, but they argued unstoppable. And John Wesley coined the phrase that oftentimes we hear, and that is agree to disagree. I will agree to disagree with you. And the way, when he brought that out, it was at this friend's funeral because the friend that died requested that John Wesley do his eulogy, even though they always debated and they were always at odds on this issue. They were, man, they were able to stay as friends. Jesus, we often just like to talk about the division part and say that that gives us permission to stand on one side with our values intact but hate the other person. That it gives us permission to cross that dividing line. But we don't read the rest of the scripture. Because what Jesus says is, you know, when you're on your way to the judge, he kind of means like when you're on your way to the kingdom of God. Try to make up your differences. Try to make peace. Try everything that you can on the way to the kingdom to love one another. And I'll tell you, in this case, that gave me a sense of relief. Because I didn't want to hate my friend because of this one thing that we disagreed on. I love my friend. Uh, he did a lot for me. And he's a, he's a devout, prayerful individual. And I also think that if we had differences and saw each other as enemies, what happens there is that the issue at hand becomes blurred a little bit and we start attacking each other instead of discussing the problem. And I think that might have been what God was talking about, what Christ said when he talked about division but about making uh, peace. Once we lose the respect for one another, we lose any chance of seeing eye to eye on anything. Yes, my selfish reason, I do believe that my viewpoint on this issue is right. I do believe that and I will not waver on that because that's what I believe. So yes, I do believe that my friend on this issue is incorrect. Do I have any chance of winning him over if I make him an enemy? Do I have any chance of bringing another person into this understanding of love if I ostracize them or separate myself from them? Do I have any chance of that? Has war ever made buddies? Usually when there's buddies made in any kind of conflict, it's because they are trying to get out of the conflict. We can see differences in our world. We can have many things that we don't see eye to eye. We can debate those. We can argue over those. But we can still love one another. That's a hard thing to understand. We want to see things in black and white. Like I said in the beginning, that's a little bit of gray. And that's where we find our faith. Remember, we follow, we're Christians. We, we follow somebody that said, in a time of great persecution of his people, that said, love your enemies. That said, love your neighbor. That said, work it out. Stand for your beliefs, but love each other in the process. That's where you will find the kingdom.